one of the elements of the rule is requiring periodic inspection of manure storage facilities. Why do we need that? Because we know that at least in two documented cases that I know of, one in Jefferson County, one in Richland County, manure storage facilities failed within weeks of being built. That means that that manure is leaking into groundwater, causing well contamination in neighboring wells. And so it's only reasonable that those facilities be periodically reviewed. We, if we don't move forward with these rules, we miss the opportunity to solve that problem and many others. So I do think we need to look at the setback distances. They might need to be modified from where they currently are. Some of the ways in which you can buy back parts of your setback, which are allowed under the current draft, those could be modified. Uh, one of our biggest sticking points is right now in the current manure, excuse me, odor scoring system we have, we measure distance by nearest affected neighbor, not property line. And for us, that's a big difference, and it is a big difference in the landscape, so we'd like to see that changed. It's trying to make sure that we really are being honest about there's two different distinct um, standards when it comes to a runoff management. The CAFOs are held to a zero discharge standard, and that farms that are siting don't necessarily need to be held to that. They're held to a substantial discharge standard. I am sad that um, the headlines that are coming out of uh, various press conference talks about uh, animal waste and what's happening as far as various discussions on ATCP 51 when we need to recognize the fact that we've got a healthy nutritious product that we want to sell consumers around the world and if we start getting into discussions about you know who's going to survive and who's not going to survive and what this um, what this means as far as will people actually stay in our state and produce milk, that's not a good discussion for us to have. <laughs>